Hello fellow educators, and welcome to another special episode of our Coffee Break series. The series designed just for you, where you'll learn unique tips, tools, and resources that can give you an extra edge when it comes to education in your classroom. Now, you're probably wondering why I'm holding this, this, and this. Three tools that are commonly used when solving problems, and not just any problems, math problems. Yes, we're going to have an amazing series today about that special subject that can draw fear or doubt in even the most sure-minded educator. But before we dive into our mathematical discussion, in the words of Jay-Z, allow me to reintroduce myself. My name is Maynard Okereke, better known as the Hip Hop MD. I have a background in civil engineering and now work as a science communicator with my platform, Hip Hop Science, where I use music, entertainment, and comedy to educate on various scientific subjects. I am your official host for this Coffee Break series, brought to you by the USA Science and Engineering Festival and sponsored by the one and only AstraZeneca, who has an amazing piece on how science powers us, which you'll hear more about later. But back to why I'm holding these common math tools. Our special guest is none other than Dr. Padu Seychere, a noted mathematician at George Mason University. Dr. Padu is changing the often negative perception that math has among students and even educators by finding creative ways to turn math haters into math lovers, solving the age-old question of, when will I ever use this in real life? Well, if you're an educator watching right now, you've surely heard this countless times, but what if we can make it a connection between this and maybe your favorite movie? If that thought has you stirring in your seat, then you're in the right place, because I would like to now introduce Dr. Padu Seychere to show us how to integrate math into everyday subjects that we're familiar with. So take it away, Doc. Greetings and welcome. Hi, my name is Padu Seysher and I'm excited to be a part of the spark of STEM Coffee Break series for educators. Hopefully, I'll help answer the question, when can I ever use these equations in real life? I'm excited to take you with me through a mathematical journey to inspire and equip you with innovative and effective instructional practices in teaching mathematics that can both help redesign the way we teach mathematics as well as engage students at all levels to appreciate why mathematics is meaningful. As a first practice, let's try to make mathematics enjoyable. Do you see the math around me? Do I? Oh yeah, I see the pie, I see the American flag, Wait a minute, I see more than the math. I see a movie, The American Pie. Now imagine as a teacher, if you're asked, do you see a movie? This approach is a great way to start a class to relate students to perhaps a topic that you're going to teach. Say in this case, pie. Let's do one more. Can you identify this movie? Hmm, it looks like an array of numbers in rows and columns. And as an educator, you're already starting to hear lots of important mathematical words being discussed by students like array, rows, columns, and perhaps they will even name the movie. I mean, the matrix, an array of numbers that are arranged in rows and columns. And yes, the movie by Lawrence Fishburne and Keanu Reeves, the action thriller, remember? At this point, the students want more of such a pop quiz. Let's do one more. How about this one? Well, I see a wall and I see a strange number in front of the wall. And the number is not pi, but something like pi. And it's called E. Oh, I see the wall and the E. The movie must be wall E. And E actually stands for Euler that sounds like boiler, not ruler. It is a special number like pi, and there is no time in history like right now to teach about E, which is usually taught in middle and high school. And it has to do with exponents, exponential growth, exponential decay. Think about COVID and the spread of the disease and how fast it spreads. Now, hope you realize by now that making mathematics enjoyable can not only be meaningful for engaging students, but also it helps you as an educator to better plan your lesson given that you learn about what students know and what students don't know. 
Now you can make it even more fun by telling them a story. For example, there's only two things you need to know about Andrew Jackson. He was the seventh president of the United States. He was elected into office in 1828, I repeat, 1828. Like every good mathematician should know, the angles of an isosceles right angle triangle is 45, 90, and 45. Like I said, you just need to know two things about Andrew Jackson. Now you know E better than any calculator. Our next practice, make math experiential. Students learn best through experience. One of the most powerful ways to engage students in learning and appreciating mathematics is through an experiential learning strategy. While the phrase experiential learning is not easy to define, it may be thought of as a particular form of learning from life experience that includes spirals of learning with continuous inquiry into the nature of experience and process of learning from it. So take the students outside the classroom, maybe to a park, put students in pairs, give them, for example, a bamboo skewer and ask them to measure the height of a tree just with a bamboo skewer without giving them any other measurement tool. This can lead to an engaged experiential learning process whereby the students are learning by doing and by reflecting on their own experience. Now for figuring the height of the tree, most secondary teacher participants that I've worked with quickly express their solutions on the board using similar triangle geometry or right triangle trigonometry. Some of them even wanted to figure out the angle of elevation first so they can actually use trigonometric ratios to find the height of a tree. But wait, I actually want some simpler strategy as well. While both those approaches that these teachers demonstrated are fantastic, I can actually play devil's advocate and say, what if there was no sun? What if you don't have a shadow? All these techniques could not work. So then what did you do? Well, you want to think about simple ideas where you can teach younger children the same exact problem that are not usually exposed to those sophisticated content like trigonometry and geometry uh, or similar triangles, for example, but they can understand ratio and proportion. So if you can think about using that bamboo skewer, mapping the height of the tree onto the bamboo skewer, and maybe you have your friend stand far away and you can actually map your friend's height onto the same bamboo skewer, now we have two points of measurement. You got your friend's height on the bamboo skewer. You got the tree's height on the bamboo skewer. You know your friend's height. And you know everything about the bamboo skewer. So you can pretty much find the height of the tree. It becomes a simple ratio and proportion problem. So welcome to experiential learning. As a next practice, Let's try to understand how to make mathematics impactful. Now, the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development by the United Nations provides a shared blueprint for peace and prosperity for people and the planet now and into the future. Now, how can we inspire students to think about how they can use mathematics to create impact? And how do we as educators introduce this into the curriculum? One practical way to implement this is to introduce to the students an instructional routine called Notice and Wonder. For this, first, you must find a video, image, text, story problem, etc., such as the one I have on the screen, for example, that aligns with the lesson you're going to teach and have the students think about it. In fact, the process starts off by asking them, what do you notice and what do you wonder? Now, it may be helpful to begin as a whole class to model this process, especially for younger students who may need support differentiating between noticing and wondering. For students who are not able to write, encourage them to draw a picture and label it, and then use the responses to have a discussion to launch the lesson and 
uh, or to begin delving deeper into the content. Now, for example, the responses to what do you notice in this picture? Maybe I see five carrots. I see a trash can. I notice someone wasting food. And that's a cue for you to ask them, now, what do you wonder? And this is perhaps where you can actually ask them to dig deeper into the domain. For example, mathematics. Now, the responses could be, I wonder how much food is being wasted. I wonder how much money is being wasted. I wonder how many students waste food in my own school. Students go through such deep mathematical thinking. It will be good to introduce to them Fermi problems. Enrico Fermi, who won the Nobel Prize for Physics in 1938 for his work on nuclear processes, was also well known for creating open real world problems that could be solved by giving a reasonable estimate. For example, a question like how many popcorn kernels can fill this room as shown in this picture? Now, one can actually assume that a popcorn kernel can uh, fit into a half inch by half inch by half inch cube and extending that to a one inch by one inch by one inch cube, there would be about eight popcorn kernels. Now one can now estimate one foot to be about 10 inches instead of 12 inches. Then a 10 inch by 10 inch by 10 inch would have about 8,000 popcorn kernels. So the students now have a measure for how many popcorn kernels are there approximately in a one foot by one foot by one foot cube. They can go from there to measuring the length and the width of the height of the room and actually estimating the number of popcorn kernels that are in this room. And in this process, they also learn about capacity, volume, three-dimensional solid geometry, and also make connections to discovering formulas for volume in terms of the length, width, and the height. Now, as an educator, we can also help them to understand how mathematics can be used in such a scenario using Fermi problems to be impactful. For example, by asking them a question, I wonder how much food is being wasted in the school cafeterias in the United States. Such open-ended questions really starts the conversations and have them think about doing some simple back of the envelope math Fermi calculations starting with the number of students in their class, number of classes in their school, number of schools in their districts, number of districts in their state, number of states in the United States. And then they will quickly realize how math can help them to quantify the food wastage just from school cafeterias. But also in this process, as an educator, you taught them about important competencies, mathematical foundations, and computing skills. And most importantly, you help create the next generation change agents who are ready to make a difference in the world. So now that Dr. Padu has gotten your wheels spinning on how to apply mathematics to exciting and relevant things that students can connect with, any guess yet on my favorite movie? Scientists use calculators to solve equations and then write down those solutions with a pen in their Notebook. Actually a pretty fitting answer when you think about the work that our sponsor AstraZeneca is doing with their Generation Health Initiative. It's all about love. Sharing the love of science with our youth and then showing them how the love and care that the medical fields provide is changing lives and reshaping our future. Up next you'll hear about this amazing program and how it's helping stimulate young minds and spark their interest in pursuing a biomedical career. AstraZeneca, Learning Undefeated, and Discovery Education have partnered to create Generation Health, how science powers us. Working with Discovery Education has been incredibly powerful for AstraZeneca because it allows us to reach many, many students across the country and inspire them to perhaps pursue a career in STEM. A dynamic, hands-on, standards-aligned educational initiative engaging students to learn about the science behind their own health through the lens of STEM. In order to support and sustain the growth of the health industry, the quality of care, we must invest in the next generation. Reaching over a million students in its first two years, Generation Health takes students inside the health industry. Bringing those young people closer to our scientists and engineers, closer to our industry, and closer to our company to stimulate their thinking 
and perhaps inspire them to get on the path to a biopharmaceutical career. HowSciencePowersUs.com provides a broad range of educational resources, not only to students, but to educators and parents. Generation Health sparks students' curiosity with ready-to-use STEM bundles, each comprised of a lesson and illustrated video that dive deep into the science of the health industry. Plus, even more resources like Learning Undefeated, who's bringing hands-on STEM education right to the school parking lot with Drop Anywhere Labs, custom outfitted STEM learning spaces built from modified shipping containers. So it's not enough to just describe what we do, we also had to expose them. Generation Health, inspiring the next generation of scientists by learning how science powers us. Thank you, AstraZeneca, for sharing your incredible work. Especially now more than ever, we're seeing how the medical fields can greatly impact humanity and why it's so important we continue to push for more future doctors, nurses, surgeons, virologists, and more to keep advancing our work in medicine and to keep us all healthy. I hope you all enjoyed this segment of our Coffee Break series. A huge shout out and thank you to our speaker today, Dr. Padu Seycher. I know personally while pursuing my engineering degree, math was a course I took literally every single quarter. Even as a college student, I questioned whether or not matrix algebra would ever show up in my real world profession. It is so important that we find ways to make that unique connection to familiar subjects early on for students to keep them engaged and curious about a subject that will no doubt have a lasting effect on their day-to-day -day lives. So thank you, Dr. Padu. You can follow more of his work by finding him on LinkedIn, Twitter, and even checking out his TED Talks on YouTube. You can also check out our weekly One Minute Spark of STEM every Wednesday and get notifications for new Coffee Break segments like this by following us on social media. And remember, even if you miss an episode, you can always watch us on demand at any time. Oh, and if you share a unique mathematic connection to a real life problem or movie with your classroom, make sure to tag at USA Science Fest and use the hashtag Spark of STEM. We hope you found this segment inspiring and can't wait to see what cool applications you come up with. Hopefully they'll be as good as my notebook. <laughs>